There's nothing new about catching seafood. Fish over there! What is new is what happens after the catch hits the net. Find out what it takes to move 80,000 kilograms of seafood a day. How bacteria can kill 600,000 fish in 48 hours. How to keep fish fresh for a year. And what the fish farm of the future looks like. It's full steam ahead to the fishery to find out what's that about. <laughs> Fishermen never know what they'll find at sea. Bad weather, unwanted predators, or just plain bad luck. For these guys, netting a good catch is only half the battle. The big challenge is getting the catch to your table in record time. So the fishery is calling on science to shave every extra second at every step of the process to keep their product fresh and sellable. Commercial fishing is big business. More than $400 billion worth of fish changes hands every year worldwide. And this is where a lot of it takes place. The new Fulton Fish Market in New York City. Fish and seafood are shipped here from every corner of the world by air, water, and land. Five days a week, all year long. New Yorkers have a huge advantage. We have the best. Augie, I need... A tilapia. What are you doing? Dave Samuels is a fish wholesaler who strives to get fish from all over the planet to your plate as fresh as possible. Angelo, could you give me one nice jumbo sea bass for VH? I'm a businessman who happens to be in the fish business. Dave is essentially a broker. A fish broker, that is. Here, excuse me one second. Jeff, Captain Ben has 425.1 of salmon. Dave works for both sides, the buyers and suppliers. He gets the best seafood for stores and restaurants, while at the same time negotiating a good price for the fishermen. When they call me, I'm their eyes. I make decisions for them. May I interject? Of course. 75 pounds. I'm done. It's for Milos. A little over, but that's okay. I don't want to short the guy on a weekend. My first concern is getting the fishermen the most money I can. It's a balancing act. This business operates primarily on good relationships that go back generations. Mike, you got VH, right? Bunk steak char. Nothing is in written. There's no contracts or your word is your bond here. You know, I'll take it. You walk away. You can't come back and change your mind. For Dave, it's in his blood. How did I get into the fish business? My grandfather started this business. That was in 1931, at the original Fulton Fish Market in Lower Manhattan. The place was so busy, they had to upgrade. Today, the new market is located in the Bronx. It took two years to complete and cost over $86 million. But everyone here will tell you it was worth every penny. It's like going from a 1974 Ford Pinto with 200,000 miles on it to a brand new BMW. This safety, efficiency, technology. This is really a state-of-the-art market. This building is a giant refrigerator the size of three football fields, and everything in it was designed for the fresh factor. In this business, freshness means speed. For starters, the loading dock can handle 30 trucks at a time. These swift, exhaust-free, no-noise, battery-operated forklifts deliver every box to Dave and the competition lightning fast, so they can hustle to sell their product fresh. To ensure the fish looks its best, the market has 176 top-of-the-line light fixtures that cost $128,000. It's got to have an eye appeal, and that's got eye appeal. And the only way you can really see it and judge it is putting your hands on it. It's a little scary looking, but it's just pure white. It's delicious. Actually, we had it the other day for lunch. 250. The real action starts around 1 a.m., when most of the trucks have unloaded their seafood and the buying and selling begins. That's fish's best friend, ice. It all happens at night, so the fish can make it to the stores and restaurants by morning. I told them they'd be about a buck and a half. I make pricing decisions sort of on the fly. That's 
the hard part, it's the fun part, it's also the most profitable part. Because this industry depends so much on Mother Nature, it's unpredictable. And prices are constantly rising and falling. I mean, they can literally double in a day or go in half, so you have to be quick on your feet. In full swing, this place looks as hectic as the New York Stock Exchange, with buyers and sellers fighting for business day after day. In chaos, there's profit. Sangelo, send that back to him. Sardines, three five zero. Jeff, Captain Ben has uh, fifty a shrimp at four dollars. I'm going this way, then I'm heading back. See, it's, a, it's an event. You sold something. <laughs> You're recording it. The people are fun. Everybody's here for a purpose. Uh, it's not neurosurgery. Dave works for the cream of the crop of New York restaurants. And they count on him to maintain their reputation as top fish restaurants. I'm a VIP in some very wonderful restaurants. It's pretty cool. The fish wholesale business is a tough racket, but going out to catch the fish is even tougher. Here in Monterey Bay, California, Andy Russo and his ship, the Sea Wave, meet that challenge all year round. I like killing the fish, <laughs> to be honest with you. It's midnight. Andy steers the Sea Wave out of Moss Landing Harbor. He's getting ready to spend the night at sea. Usually, Andy fishes for squid. It's his best moneymaker. But these days, he can't find any. So he'll take whatever he stumbles upon. I fish for mackerel, sardines, anchovies, squid, anything that's in a school. The types of fish Andy is after are easier to catch at night. So Andy starts looking for the right spot just before dark. But Andy's not alone. By his side for over 17 years are six crewmates who go out five nights a week scouring the sea in search of fish. The olden timers used to tell us that the fish are going to come and find us. But that's no longer true. So Andy's main tool for the hunt is sonar. The system tracks the size, density, and position of a school of fish by sending and receiving sound waves. When it's purple, that means the school is solid. When then when it's blue and green and all those colors, scattered fish, not very thick. It's a combination of sonar, Andy's knowledge of the area, the currents and fish habits that'll hopefully put the boat over the biggest catch. So far when I'm seeing it doesn't look very good. <laughs> but I'm hoping that we bump into them. Hello. The stakes are high for Andy. He needs to find enough fish to make up for the fuel costs and the crew's salary. As the crew waits to be called, Andy's the only one working on the boat. Haven't really been looking too good, but uh, going up the hill here. It sure is lonely at the top. Every once in a while you get, you get on the spot, you know, and it feels pretty good. The spot is the mother load, a catch of 50 tons. And when that happens, Andy relies on the sea wave to do the job. The sea wave is a 24 meter purse sainer that took two years to build, was completed in 1989, and has room for 80 tons of fish in its refrigerated holds. It's called a purse sainer because of the type of net it uses. What's that about? A purse seine is a net with a drawstring that, when pulled, creates a purse around a school of fish. When the captain has located a school, a smaller boat holds one end of the net while the sea wave circles the fish with the other end. Once the net is around the fish, like a curtain, the drawstring is pulled and the bottom closes before the fish escape. Finally, Andy's found a school of fish. Look at that purple mark right there. Let it go! 50, 60 tons of fish. The crew has to act fast. They don't want to lose a single fish. So how does Andy know what's in the net? He uses bombs. What did you expect? There we go. Oh. Keeping an eye on the school is Andy's brother. Joe Russo. What it does, it just steers them up. You know, the fish that's on top of the water, 
um, when the bomb goes off, it just steers them up, makes them jump out of the water, just to see what kind of fish they are. I see an anchovy. Huh? I see an anchovy there. Anchovies in a catch of sardines is not a good sign. Andy needs a clean catch, and if there's as much as 30% of anchovies in a sardine haul, he won't find a buyer. And as we can see, it looks like the majority looks like sardines. That's a relief. But now the fishermen have to contend with some fierce competition. Those are sea lions, yeah. Those are the ones that are scaring everything away. Sea lions are Andy's nemesis. Just when he starts turning the boat on the school of fish, the hungry mammals race through the bounty, sending the school in every direction. Big problem, scaring everything away. They chase the fish out through the bottom of the net here. We're in deep water here, so they could go out at any time here. It seems the bombs Andy's crew throws to take a look at the catch serve as dinner bells for sea lions. Whenever they hear the bombs, they know they'll find fish. It's a big party. I think they follow the boat around, you know, and they wait for us to set the net, and then they have dinner, and they go on their way. They're driving us crazy, those things. We'll see what happens here now when we pull the net in here. Slip it, slip it. Oh! At $80 a ton for a clean catch of sardines, they're hopeful that there will be enough fish left in the net to make it worth their while. Keep our fingers crossed here, and uh, in the next five minutes here, we'll know. We'll be going to market or we won't be. As the net is tightened, the sardines get so crowded that they form a writhing, slippery mass. The net looks a little bit heavy. How much do we get, Drew? 15, 20? That's about it, I think. 15 or 20, huh? I thought it was going to be better. Ah, uh, those sardines are that way, you know. And he didn't get as big a haul as he'd hoped. They killed us. What started as a 50-ton spot became a 20-ton spot in seconds. Ah, oh, frustrated. To get the sardines onto the sea wave, the net stays in the water, while this massive, super-powered vacuum does all the work. What we're doing now, we put the pump in the fish. We're turning on the pump. This pump is so powerful, it can suck up to 45,000 kilograms of fish per hour. It's coming from the ocean here in a hose, which has got water and fish together. And it's going to come down the separator here, nice and easy. The water separator is basically a huge sieve that dumps the water back into the sea and sends the sardines directly into holes in the boat, which have been filled with ice and seawater. This is hydraulically run, and it makes life a whole lot easier for us. <laughs> as soon as the fish hit the holes, the crew gets the net ready to cast again. I'm hoping that we're going to get another 10 and 12 ton here just to make the night here. We'll see what happens here. Andy and the crew fish into the early hours of the morning to try to fill the holes. As long as we get something put on the boat. Yeah. If you knew every time was going to be the same, that would be easy. Yeah. But it's fishing, it's not. I don't have much time here, so. But we'll hope, we'll pray. Then suddenly, just before dawn. Oh! Right there, see that little spot? Maybe about 10 tons. 10 tons. Not a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. Right there is not a good spot. Uh, we've seen every fish there. Well, anytime we can put the pump in, we're making something, you know. As dawn breaks, the fishing day is done, so Andy and his crew head back to harbor. On the way to port, the crew tends to the net, a fisherman's best friend. Andy's net is almost 40 years old. Replacing it would cost upwards of $100,000, so it's well worth taking the time to maintain it. Unloading is done the same way the fish get on board. First, a huge vacuum sucks them up through a pipe that lifts them to a belt where they're separated from the water and checked for quality. 